All right, so to get started with testing, with UI testing, just as uh, kind of the most basic introduction possible, we're gonna get started by building uh, just kind of a simple activity, a single activity, and we're gonna build a second activity, and we're going to navigate between the two and make sure that the UI looks the way it should. So here's the example on the screen here that we're gonna be doing in this video. So we have a single activity named main activity. It has a single button, it has next on it. If I click next, it takes me to the secondary activity, which is just another activity. Uh, the only option here is to click back, which takes me back to that first activity. So uh, it seems you know very simple, obviously, but you're gonna learn quite a few things that are really fundamental. Number one, which dependencies do you absolutely need to use in these scenarios? How do you test activities independently? Uh, so first we're gonna start by just testing main activity, making sure that the UI looks the way it should. Then we're gonna test secondary activity, making sure the UI looks the way it should. And then after this video, so in the next video, we're gonna work on testing navigation. So that'll be like, when I click next, am I taken to the correct activity? When I click back, am I taken back to the correct activity? So in this video, we're testing um, activities in isolation. That's what this video is called. So making sure main activity looks the way it does and making sure that uh, secondary activity looks the way it does and what dependencies you need to do that. Okay, so here I am in Android Studio, and the first thing is we're going to get those dependencies. So obviously I've added them ahead of time. I have four dependencies here. I have the Espresso Core dependency. So this is kind of the most important one that you'll need in pretty much all of your tests. Uh, also pay attention to the test implementation that I've added here. So if you want to, for, for unit testing, for those of you who've watched my unit testing course with JUnit, uh, JUnit 5 I used, also some JUnit 4, uh, notice that the, the test implementation kind of uh, identifier is used for those unit tests. So when you're writing UI tests, you need to use Android test implementation. So notice that all of these are Android test implementation because these are all dependencies that are going to be used in UI tests. If we're writing, uh, if we're adding dependencies that are used in our production code, it's just implementation. Test implementation, as I said, is for the unit tests, like the isolated unit tests that run on the Java virtual machine. But the Espresso tests, the UI tests, are Android test implementation. So here's the core Espresso dependency. Like I said, you can get this from the GitHub page. So if you go to the source code for this project, which I'll bring up here, you can go to any one of the branches, just go into app, go into the build.gradle file, and then you can find the dependencies that you need and copy those and add those into, into your project. Uh, so these are the ones that we're going to need just to get started. These are kind of the bare bones ones that we you need to do any kind of testing. And as you know, in this video, we're just kind of testing activities in isolation. So very, very simple, very simple tests. I should also mention the Android X test dependencies. So recently, um, the testing kind of uh, environment has changed on Android. They've been adding a lot of new things with Android X, and that's uh, to come along with that is these Android X dot test dependencies. So they're they're adding uh, they're improving the testing framework basically for Android. So in this course, we're going to be using all a bunch of the new Android X test stuff. So um, to start off, we'll be using the test runner, the core dependency, and then the JUnit dependency, which I'll explain which uh, what these are used for as we go through the examples. So those are those are the dependencies that you need to get started. Now let's start actually building that very simple app and doing the tests. So first we have activity main. Right now it's empty and we have main activity and that's empty. So I'm not gonna write these layouts out on video. I don't think it's a good use of time. So go to the branch. There'll be a link in the description of this video. Uh, get the code and go to grab the layout. So just go into main, go into res, go into layout and click on activity main to start and then just copy all of activity main. So it's pretty straightforward layout, nothing really fancy here, just a text view that says, hey, this is main activity, and then a button down here that says next that, that we're going to use to take to the next activity. Also, I should mention that there are some strings in here. So open the strings file, and we have um, a bunch that actually aren't going to be used in this video, but to be safe, you can just grab the strings. So go to res, go to values, go to strings, and you can just copy all these and paste those into your project, just like I have right there. Now let's get the other layout. So the layout for secondary activity. So go to activity secondary, highlight all of this, copy that. Let's go back to Android Studio, right click, go to, actually, you know what? Let's just create an activity. That's because that'll generate it for us. So right click on the main package directory, go to new activity, click on, we want 
basic activity. No, 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 not basic activity. I think empty activity. So go to new, go to activity. There is an empty activity. And this is going to be called secondary activity. And activity secondary is the layout. It's Kotlin. Generate the layout file. All good. Let's click finish. Now it's asking me if I want to add that to Git. I'm not going to. So this is going to do a bunch of stuff for us. Obviously, it's going to generate the layout. It's also going to add the new activity to the manifest. So if you look in here, notice that it's now added to the manifest. So that's one less thing that we would need to do. I always forget to do that. So that's that's great. Now let's uh, let's go to the code and copy that that secondary activity and paste that into into here. So pretty simple. Again, we just have kind of a uh, we have a title and we have a back button and the tools is wrong. I don't care though. I'll just delete that. So we have we have our layout, which is activity main. We have our layout for secondary activity. We have our secondary activity and we have our main activity. So now let's go into main activity and create an on click listener for the button that takes us to uh, secondary activity. This should be button. Yeah, button next activity set on click listener. And then we want to create an intent. So value intent equals a new intent. That intent will reference the context, which is main activity. And we're going to take, we're going to go to secondary activity class dot Java, start activity, and then pass that intent. So that, that takes care of our main activity. Pretty simple, nothing fancy. Now we're going to go into secondary activity and just add an on click listener to that, uh, that back button. So button back set on click listener and this one will be just to finish finish this activity i guess alternatively you could uh just like override the on back pressed or use the on back pressed either one is fine if we had more activities technically it would be probably a better idea to use on back pressed to use go through the regular navigation system uh, but whatever whatever you whatever you want works in this scenario so we have our our basic app here i'm going to go up here and make sure that i have apps selected and I'm going to run this just to make sure that everything is uh, set up correctly before we start making any tests. Oh, it looks like I have some stuff in here from uh, some previous, some previous, um, some previous uh, testing that I did. So I can just delete these. I have this in here from before, so don't worry about that. Run that again; it should be good to go. All right, so I'll just bring the app on the screen here. Notice we have the correct title showing. We have our next button. If I click next, I'm taken to secondary activity. If I click back, then I'm taken back to main activity. So that's working correctly. Also, just as a, as a warning to those of you who didn't watch the previous video of how to use the source code and also how to prepare for this course, notice that when I click the next button, it gives kind of a weird animation and then it bring, brings the second activity into view. If I go back, it also does that weird kind of animation. That's because we've disabled animations on this device. So any fragment transactions, any activity uh, animations, I believe this is an animation anyway, like a very subtle one. Uh, so all of these things might look kind of weird to you, but that's because we've disabled animations on this device. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch that video because it's important. You need to, you need to do that to move forward with this, uh, with this course. So anyway, our app is working correctly. That's all good. Now let's, uh, let's actually start building these tests. So what do we do? Well, I haven't explained kind of anything about how tests are organized in the in the uh, project yet. So I'll start with that. So if we go to the project tab up here, we have kind of a couple options. So if you expand app and you expand source, you have main and you have test. And there should actually be a third one. There should be Android test here, which I'm not sure why that isn't there. I must have accidentally deleted the package when I was preparing this for this video. So anyway, what you should see here is you'll see main, you'll see test, and you'll see another directory called Android test. I'm just going to recreate it because I've obviously deleted it by accident. So it should be Android test and you'll have a folder in there, which will be a Java folder. Don't worry about what I'm doing right now. This is just me correcting my mistake that I obviously made earlier. Um, so there should be a Java directory in there. And then inside here, we need to recreate the package structure. So com coding with Mitch, uh, espresso UI test examples, test, te yeah, that was right. Test examples. So that, so what, so what you'll see is you'll see Android test main and test. So inside test is where your, uh, unit tests would go. So this is the tests that get run locally on your machine. I made a course on this. You can check it out on my website if you want. 
I'll just bring it up for you just so you can see it. So if you go to codingwithmitch.com and go to courses, I have a unit testing course, which is right here, unit testing. So that those tests, those unit tests are kept in the test directory. Main is obviously the main package directory. And then you have Android tests, which is where your Espresso UI tests will live. So inside here right now, um, you should actually have like a, by default, you'll have like a, if you just launch a new project, you'll have like a dummy test. Just like if you look inside of the test directory, you have um, this example unit test. You'll have an example like espresso test in there by default. We don't care about that, so you can delete that if you want. So what, what's gonna happen when we wanna build a test for main activity? Well, I can do this a couple ways. You can just like right click on the package and create a class if you want, so like create a new column file. Or if you want, just click on the activity that you want to test go to generate and click on test, and then we can generate a test. So we're using JUnit 4, yes. It's gonna be called main activity test, yes. Everything else is fine, I'm gonna click okay. So now I can choose, do I wanna put this in the Android test directory or do I wanna put this in the test directory? And like I said, the test directory is for the local unit test, the Android test directory is for the espresso test, or in other words, the instrumentation test. So that's where we want it, that's where we're going to generate that file. And no, I don't want to add that to Git. So there we go. We have generated our first Espresso test. So um, if you didn't add the dependencies that I mentioned, you might have something that says like uh, Android JUnit 4 here or something like that, which is a, a different runner. But, oh, I'm going to burp. <laughs> Almost burped. But since they've been since they've added all the new Android X test kind of dependencies, this is the new runner that you want to use. So you want to make sure you have Android X test internal runner JUnit 4 Android JUnit 4 class runner. That's a mouthful. <laughs> um, and then the run with. So that that is how we are going to run our tests. So now we're going to start with the most like kind of simple test possible. We want to we want to look at main activity. I'm just going to bring bring the app on the screen here. We want to look at main activity, that's secondary activity, and we want to just make sure that it was launched. So we want to, the first thing we want to do is we want to launch a test activity. That's step one. Then we want to confirm that the test looks or the activity looks the way it should. So that would mean like the title is correct and the next button exists. So that's what we're going to work on. Okay, so to generate a new test function, you can either write it out manually. So that means like just literally writing at test and then writing, you know, function and then giving it a name. You can do that or you can have Android Studio generate the uh, test function for you. So if you want to click alt insert and then click on test function, then give your test function a name. Uh, this one is going to be very simple. I'm just going to call it uh, test uh, activity. So activity in view. So I'm going to test is the activity in view. So I could call it that. I could be like is activity in view. That's kind of the most basic test that we could possibly do. All I care about is did we launch the activity? Is the activity in view? So now the first question is how do we launch an activity with Espresso? Well with the new Android X dependencies, the new Android X testing dependencies, we want to use something called an activity scenario. So I'm going to write activity scenario and set it equal to activity scenario dot launch and then reference the activity that I'm going to launch. So in this case this is main activity. So what that's going to do is it's going to create an activity inside of this test function. So it's isolated inside this test function. So if I had a whole bunch of test functions like test function one, test function two, test function three, whatever, if each of them had an activity scenario, they, they'd be launching an activity inside of each of their isolated functions. One of the first questions you have right now is probably, oh, why don't we just create an activity object globally? Like why not, why not just um, take this and make it like a global thing and then have that used in all of the test functions. And you can do that, but uh, sometimes you want to test, like I, I find it more effective to have like its own isolated test function because then you can test like a specific property. But also, um, I'm also gonna show you a, a shorter way to do this later in the video where you can declare it globally one time and it will get uh, get created inside each test function without actually having to even put it in the test function. But we're going to, I'll talk more about that later. So anyway, get, getting, I'm getting off track. This, this is what we're doing. We're launching an activity and this is how you do it. So now how do you test that, uh, I hit my mic there. 
how do you test that uh, this activity is in view and that it looks the way it should? So the easiest way to do this is to write on view. You'll have to import that. So you can see that's part of the Android X test espresso dependency, the core dependency. And then I want to I want to look for the thing that I'm testing. So look for the view with the ID r.id.main. And I'm going to point this out to you just so that you know. Uh, let's open up the um, let's go to go to main, go to res, go into layout, go into activity main. Uh, so what, where is main? It's this, it's this kind of parent layout right here. So this constraint layout, this has the ID of main. So I'm looking for this. So I'm looking to make sure that that is in the view. And what I want to do is call check. And I want to say matches. And then I want to say is displayed. So is displayed. So getting all those imports. So this is kind of the, the most classic sort of test or classic sort of way that you'll be testing using Espresso. You'll always be saying, you know, find some view with some ID. You can also look for text. You can look for other things. But the, the best way, I think, is to look for a specific ID, uh, test to see if this is in the ID, check that it matches, is displayed. And this is going to, this kind of, um, this kind of naming is going to take some getting used to. But once you get used to it, it's going to be very uh, very easy for you to remember kind of the way to name this. So now this is our first test. We're testing just to see that the activity launches and that this main kind of container is in view. So let's let's launch this test. So I can, so a bunch of ways you can do this. You can click this play button, click that one. You can right click here, go to run main activity test one. You can, uh, what else can you do? I don't know, you can do a bunch of things, but I'm gonna right click on this, go to run, and this is gonna run my UI test. So if you watch the emulator, it will actually launch the activity. I'll actually pull it up on view here. It will actually launch the activity and, um, and you'll see it do its thing. So there you saw it launch the activity and it, then it closed the activity when it was done. And you can see down here that our test, test is activity in view passed and everything was good to go. So that that is your first that's your first test. Now let's uh, let's build upon this and um, kind of test the other things that I was talking about. So next, let's test the visibility of that next button. So if you look at activity main, we have this title and we have this next button. We'll actually want to test the title too. So we'll we'll do kind of all of that. So let's uh, let's click Alt Insert. Go to Test Function. This one's going to be test. Uh, I'll say test visibility of the title and the next button. Oh yeah, by the way, you're probably wondering why, why I'm naming these the way that I'm naming. There's different naming conventions uh, depending on the team that you're working on or the project that you're working on or whatever. Everybody's gonna have kind of different naming con conventions. I think the biggest thing is um, make the name very obvious to what you're testing. Like if someone was to read this, test visibility title next button, I think it's pretty obvious that, okay, what am I testing? Visibility, okay, the visibility of what? Oh, the title and the next button. So it's pretty obvious like what you're testing you just want to be sort of mindful of that and and don't uh, don't worry if like these names get really long I don't think anybody's gonna get angry at you if you have like a name that's like 10 words long or something as long as it makes sense so the biggest thing is like readability and make sure that these things make sense okay so we need our activity scenario rule again so activity scenario rule dot launch I should have just copied it from the line above, but I'm halfway done already, so I'll just finish it. Uh, so now we want to do our classic on view with ID. What well, with ID? This is r dot act r dot id dot activity main title is the one that I'm looking for. And what do I want to check? I want to check to see if it matches is displayed. All I care about is is the title displayed. So if we look at activity main, the title here is activity main title. And then the button here is button next activity. So now, as you might guess, we're going to text, test the uh, test the button. So this is going to be activity activity or button next activity. Uh, again, we just want to check if that's visible, and that would be it. Uh, I also want to note that there's another way to test visibility. Um, I'm not sure exactly why you might want to use one way over the other one, but I definitely uh, had some kind of issues that I ran into. So I wanted to show you the other way anyway, in case you are, you run into some issues. So if I wanted to test visibility a different way, instead of using is displayed, I could say um, matches with effective visibility and then do visibility dot visible. So that those are two, two ways to do the same thing. So this would be like method number one, 
and this would be like method number two. So of course you can also test for like invisible and you can test for gone. So those, those different types of visibility constants. So, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you want to use, I think they're pretty much equivalent. Um, just, I wanted you to know about them in case you run into issues like is displayed, maybe isn't working. You want to try something else. You can always try that. So now that we have another test, let's move on to the next one. Uh, let's so alt insert again, test function. And this one is going to be called test is title text displayed. So, so far, all we've done is tested visibility. Um, the, like, like is, the, is the title visible? Is the button visible? But we haven't tested, you know, is anything a specific thing? Like in activity main, the title is main activity. That's what we want to test. Is that text, does that text say main activity? So I'm going to go up here. I'm actually going to copy the, these two things here because it's going to be mostly the same. We want to launch our activity scenario. We're interested in the view activity main title. But the thing that we're checking here is we're checking if it matches with text, just r.string.activity uh, text main activity. I believe that was the name of the string here, text main activity. Yes. So all I'm doing is I'm checking to make sure that that text is exactly what it should be. Alternatively, I could like just write the raw string in here. I could say, you know, main activity, but it's better to use the, the actual string value. So those are our three tests for main activity. It's very simple, but it outlines, it showcases kind of the, the most fundamental things when it comes to testing uh, an activity. So now let's right click here. Let's go to run our new test and let's see if those, those tests pass. And I'm going to bring the emulator on the screen here so you can see uh, see it do its thing. So there it is launching the activity. It's it's testing. Is it in view? It's testing. Is the title? Is everything displayed? And then is that that? Um, oh no, yeah, I mixed up the order, but you get what I mean. It it made it did those three tests. So you're probably wondering actually why it ran it in this order and when the order is different in the file itself. And the answer is it does it alphabetically. So test is activity. There's an A and then a T and then a V. So, or sorry, A, um, A, well, these are both I. So A comes before T and then V comes after I. So it's alphabetical. So no matter what order you write them in, it's going to test them in alphabetical order. But those are our three, those are our three tests. They all passed. So we know we are good to move, move forward. So that's main activity. That's all I want to do for main activity. Let's now move on to secondary activity. And this is going to be mostly the same, but instead of declaring this activity scenario inside of each, each test function independently, I'm going to show you how to declare it once globally, but it will still be called um, before each test function. So I'll show you how to do that in, in this uh, secondary activity test. So let's right click on secondary activity, go to generate, go to generate a new test class. Uh, all of this is the same. We want to go in the Android test directory. No, I don't want to add that to Git, and we'll open this up and we'll uh, write these tests. So, um, so how do how do we do this? Well, I'm going to use something called a test rule. So I'm going to write at get and then capital rule, and we're going to add a value, and this is going to be uh, an, a, a test rule that will be called. Uh, like I said before each function and what it's going to do is it's going to do exactly what we've done inside of this each of these functions which is create a new activity scenario or in other words launch a new activity for each one of the tests so I'm going to call it activity rule it will equal activity scenario rule uh, and then inside of here it'll be secondary activity and then just reference the class.java so now, like I said, we've, we've declared this rule and now every time I create a test, so if I create a test here, I'll call it test uh, is activity in view. So copying the same kind of thing we did in main activity test. Uh, now I don't need to create that activity scenario. I, I know that it's already going to be launched as soon as I have, um, as, soon as, I, as soon as I've created this function, as soon as I uh, run the function. So now I just write on view with ID r.id.secondary. So this is the primary view inside here. That's this ID right here, this constraint layout. I can close some of these because it's taking up a lot of space here. Uh, so now I just want to check, is that in view? So dot check matches and then is displayed is displayed. 
So same kind of thing we did in the other test class. So now let's write, uh, let's write some other tests. So we're going to do the same kind of thing we did in the previous test class. We just want to make sure that everything that should be visible is visible and the correct title is being displayed. So I'm going to say test. This will be uh, visibility of the title and also of the next. Or actually, it'll be back button. Back button in this case. And inside here, I just want to uh, copy, I can copy this since it's going to be pretty similar. So is the title title in view, so activity secondary title, and also is the button in view. So button uh, back, and is that displayed? And then the last test we're going to write, so alt insert again, test function. This will be test uh, title and title text displayed. So I'll write is is title text displayed. So again, just pasting that in, I'm going to get the title here. So activity secondary title, and I want to make sure that that text is correct. So matches with text and then R dot string dot, it'll be text secondary activity. All right. So there is our test. Now I'm going to come up here. I'm going to right click, go to run, and that will run all of our, our new tests for the secondary activity. So it's starting the test down here. You can see it, it's running. There is the activity in view. Yes, it's in view. Is the title text displayed and is the, is the title and the back button visible? Yes, they all are. So all of our tests pass, everything is good to go. Um, so we are ready to move on to the next video. So I know this is like very, very simple, but uh, these, these sort of, these, this sort of thing is very fundamental. You know, everything from the activity scenario to just using on view, referencing an ID, checking if it's displayed, checking if there's certain text there. All of these things are really fundamental. Like all of your tests will be basically scaffolding up from this, these very, very simple scenarios. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to test the navigation. So in the app that you saw here, I'll just open it up. So you have main activity and if you click next, you go to secondary activity. If you click back, you go back to main activity. So this, this sort of navigation uh, also needs to be tested. You know, if you go to a new activity or a new fragment, um, is the correct one coming into view? So that's what we're going to work on next. One more thing before I go, since this is a free course, do not forget to like the video. Do not forget to leave a comment. Tell me what you want to know. Say anything, say hi, doesn't matter. Leave a comment, leave a like. Um, I need, I need every, anything I can get from these free videos. Also, if, if you find this course helpful, this free course helpful, go to codingwithmitch.com, click on more and go to testimonials and leave me a testimonial. Um, lots of people leave me testimonials. I've got 388 so far, so far 4.99 average rating, pretty good, not bad. So if you want to leave a testimonial, go there, just click on write a testimonial. You'll need to make an account, which will take, you know, 20 seconds, but it's not a big deal. Just click that, write a testimonial, give me five stars real quick, no big deal. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.